Today in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about making prototypes. Well, almost everything. Not the simple prototypes, you know, that we make on our design tools by connecting different artboards, but I'm talking about the advanced one, high fidelity ones, which look and feel just like a real app. So much so that if not told, you'll find it hard to distinguish a well-made prototype from a real app. And all these without writing a single line of code. Sounds unbelievable, right? I'm also going to tell you about ProtoPie, which is my favorite tool for advanced prototyping. Trust me, if you're a product designer, knowing how to prototype can give you unfair advantage over competition. So stay tuned and we will start right after the jingle. Awesome people, welcome to my channel. This is Sapta and if you are here for the first time, this is the place where I help designers build and scale their career with tips, suggestions and tutorials. So if you're into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. What is a prototype? Simply put, a prototype is a preliminary version of a product. Now how much preliminary can vary based on the nature of the product or what you wish to do with the prototype? For example, say a restaurant has come up with a new dish, invented a new dish, and they wanted to understand if people like the taste of it before mass producing it. The prototype for this could be simple bite-sized portions of the same dish. Now, in these bite-sized portions, only taste is being evaluated and hence the way the food will be presented and the size of the portion are not so important. This is a picture of a bite-sized portion of Turkish pilaf that I had tasted at my workplace. Yeah, perks of working at Swiggy. Similarly, if the goal had been to evaluate only the presentation of the dish, that is, how the dish will look when served, then the prototype could be very different. It may not even need to be made from the actual edible ingredients, but it will need to look exactly like the way they intend to serve to their guest once it is in the menu. In the same way, even in design, it is important to know why you are building the prototype. There could be many reasons. Some common ones are uh, user testing or conveying the idea to your engineering or other team members. I have even made prototypes for early stage founders for presenting their vision to the investors so that they can raise money. In each of the scenarios, the goal is either to showcase and explain the idea or to validate a concept or user experience by testing it with real world before going into mass production. This approach saves a considerable amount of time, money and effort because you understand, right? You wouldn't want to fail after you have done all the effort and made the final product. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, what are you talking about? Aren't this user test supposed to be quick and dirty? Shouldn't we use wireframes for that? Well, you see, wireframes are like skeletons. They are bare bones representations of a product that don't 100% show how it'll work or what it'll look like in real life. And no one likes to interact with skeletons. Think about it. If a skeleton walked up to you and asked you for the time, you'd probably run for your life. A wireframe on the other hand may not scare your users, but your users may not be imaginative enough to fill in the gaps in a wireframe to fully understand and then react to it in a natural way. If you show a wireframe in a user testing, your users will still interact with it. You will still have things to observe and document. But there's a high probability that the insights that you observe may not be a realistic representation of how they will actually feel and react when they use your real product. This is because they'll tend to look at it in a literal way and miss important details that could be crucial insights for the success of the product. Let me know in the comments if you want a detailed video on wireframes. That's why users need to be shown an advanced prototype with all the flesh and blood. In other words, a prototype that closely resembles the final product so that the users understand the product and its features in a more realistic way and provide a feedback that is more accurate and actionable. Wireframe tests are okay, but only for the working group. That is your fellow designers or product managers who have all the context and they can perhaps make sense even out of those low fidelity boxes. Look at these. We extensively use ProtoPie at work and before actually building these new designs, we had made realistic prototypes for showing around to our leadership teams and potential users for feedback. We then gathered those feedback, made changes before actually building and releasing them to our users. And we also use these prototypes as reference for our engineering teams for sharing complex non-standard interactions like these. Big shout out to Abhishek and Akshata from our team who had contributed to making these prototypes using ProtoPie. Now the reason I said knowing prototyping can give you unfair advantage because there are relatively fewer people who can do it 
especially in India. Out in the Silicon Valley, designers tend to prototype a lot more. They create concepts, build prototypes, and validate a lot of their hypothesis. It's part of the culture, you know. Beyond concepts, prototyping also saves them a lot of time and help them move ahead faster. Imagine if you have a non-standard interaction in your design and you need to explain it to the developer. No matter how long and detailed a document you write, it will never be as effective as a realistic prototype that the developer can operate and feel themselves. Tools like Prototype have cloud services that offers handoff features and interaction recordings to improve the handoff process and ensure that things get communicated in the most effective manner. Protopie is hands down my favorite tool for advanced prototyping and I have talked about it in a bunch of other videos. I'll drop a link to my video on design tools in the description below. Check that out later. The reason I love Protopie so much is that it lets you achieve an incredible level of interactivity and realism without having to write a single line of code. Plus, it works like a charm on both Android and iPhone and you can take advantage of all the native hardware features like the camera, keyboard, audio input, accelerometer, a 3D touch, compass, proximity sen sensor, you name it, you have it. <laughs> Check this out for instance. The super cool interaction where the card inside the app moves as I move the phone can be done very easily using Protopie with just one trigger. Protopie is all about triggers and responses. Triggers are the things that trigger or in other words, initiate anything. From a simple tap to tilt of the physical device are all triggers. Responses are nothing but the actions or the stuff that happens when a trigger initiates it. For example, tapping a button is a trigger that can initiate a response like moving something or changing the color or opacity of something and so on. There's a long list of triggers and responses available in Protopie. And in this case, tilting the phone at a certain angle will initiate 3D rotation of the card inside it. Yes, that's exactly what I've done here. I have made the assets on Figma and imported the PNG here and I have simply instructed Protopie to 3D rotate the card between minus 8 and plus 8 degrees whenever the device tilts between minus 10 and plus 10 degrees. That's it. Every other response that you see here, be it the move or the opacities, are just to add bells and whistles to it. I've chosen to move the glare, which is nothing but another PNG image, in the opposite direction so that it feels like the reflection of the light is changing, and so on. Trust me, this tool can be super duper fun. You can even write conditions and use variables to build some fair amount of functionality right into your prototype. The possibilities are literally immense. I've literally seen some of my colleagues build some simple games on Protopie because why not? You can do it. Here, I haven't even told you the best part yet. The best part is that, are you ready? Well, the best part is that it's free for individuals. Of course, the free plan has some limitations, but that's enough for you to get started. But, 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 if you are a student or a teacher with a valid ID card, you can get even the paid plans for free. Yes, that's how the tool works. And if you're not a student or a teacher and you still want to use a paid version, don't worry, you can use the code SAPTARSHI to get a flat 30% off when you check out. Also, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a series of tutorials on Protopie that is super easy to understand for beginners. If I get enough number of comments, I'll surely make that series. So there you have it folks. Prototyping is super important in design process and can really help your career. Like I said, in India, we still don't have the active culture around prototyping and you can change the game by being a pioneer and a relatively early adopter. I hope this video has given you valuable insights into the design process and how powerful advanced prototyping can be. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. This is Sapta signing off.